We are with Richard Jenkins, the Chief Executive of NSI. Uh, we'll start with a very simple question. Uh, tell us a little bit about the work that you do here at NSI. Yeah, good morning to you. Good morning. Well, the NSI, National Security Inspectorate, is the leading um, approval body in the industry for uh, installers of uh, security systems, fire systems, and also um, spreading into the guarding and physical security sector. So essentially, um, monitoring the standards of uh, companies that are providing services which in the end result in police response to uh, alerts and activities out there in the in the real world. And why is it so important for you guys to be seen here at such a huge event like IFSEC? Well we're proud to be here. This is our 20th year um, of existence as NSI. Um, we're celebrating our 20 years of supporting the industry and um, we're particularly busy this year with um, a standard for those who are familiar, the 9001 standard which is going through a major upgrade. So our 1500 companies are upgrading their own standards to accommodate that new quality management system which is being uh, um, introduced at the current time. What else has got you really excited in 2018? In 2018, in 2018 we've been um, looking also at improving the way alarm signalling moves through to the police. So the police at some point make a decision to respond to an alarm signal. And there are ways in which that whole process can be improved. So we've been looking at how that can be moved on and how the industry can support that activity better. And so we commissioned some research during 2018, um, which has just been published in the last couple of months, around what is now now known to become as ECHO, um, which is a project to try and improve the efficiency of getting those signals through to the police. Okay, well, we're going to bring in Dave Wilkinson now, uh, who's the Director of Technical Services at BSIA. Thanks very much for joining us. Yeah, good afternoon. And um, we, I guess the big question here is, um, why is there a need for more automated alarm signalling, in your opinion? Uh, I think, well, as a trade association, uh, we are very much uh, member driven. Uh, we have alarm receiving centres and we have installers uh, who obviously install the signalling systems. Um, from ECHO's point of view, um, ECHO is, has been an initiative by industry, uh, the three key trade associations, which is the BSIA, the FIA, and the FSA. Uh, we've come together as independent groups to actually look at putting alarm uh, signaling through ECHO. Um, ECHO was formed as a company back in August last year uh, and its primary purpose is to actually, um, I guess, automate the only manual part of the process which remains. We already uh, automate alarm calls into alarm receiving centres, but what we don't do then is we don't automate it from there onto the police and the fire service. So this gives us an opportunity to make that process an automated one, uh, and I think that's going to improve efficiency for us. Uh, it also, I guess, means that we can keep the professional side of the industry ahead of what, I guess, there are other parts of the industry which are probably just not as professional as ours, and therefore it gives us that differentiation. And where do you think the future of this particular market is? I mean, it's, it's fully automated now, as you're, as you're alluding to there. Uh, where does it go from here? Well, Echo, Echo's first stage is to automate, uh, and as you say, that will reduce errors um, uh, and, and improve efficiencies. We're obviously driven as well by the police and the fire service who are looking for improvements in uh, the way we operate alarm signalling. Uh, and I think some examples we've had in the past where there's been errors maybe, where human error, something's been misinterpreted when it's been phoned through, and the result being um, the wrong response or not a response, and therefore this will take that away and automate it. It'll also give us some good advantages for uh, URN management, so therefore where at the moment we apply for reference numbers in a pretty manual way, this will allow that process to be done online. Uh, so it's got some added values and I think overall that will help the industry to improve the way it responds with the police and the fire service. Yeah, I would just add that over the last 10 or so years, the industry has moved the game in the sense that the number of false alarms that police respond to has reduced by something like 90%. Right. So although it's sort of unwritten and unseen, the efficiencies um, that the police experience as a result of that have really dramatically shifted. And what we're looking for now with ECHO is the next step change to, to really up our game as an industry and support the um, security services in a much more positive way. Well, thank you both for the fascinating insight. I just wanted, before you leave, uh, it's not hard to miss you guys. You've got an, an owl here behind you here we called Cash. We have got an owl called Cash, yeah. Dear old Cash, he's getting on for 20 years as well, okay. coincidentally. Right. 
Um, when we, w we special guest, when we approve a company, yeah. then um, we award a medal to the company. And um, historically, the, our legacy is to award a medal produced by the Royal Mint, engraved yeah. with an owl. Right. So we bring our owl along, uh, and as you can see, it creates quite a bit of attention and attraction on the stand. Okay. Well, we'll leave you with pictures of the owl. Uh, thank you very much both for your time. And there he is, Cash. Thank you.